Greetings, we're glad to have you back again. This is Lila Trujillo, God TV with Throne Room Prayer. And we welcome those that, uh, and, and appreciate those that signed up last week, and we hope that we're gonna be able to recruit a lot more uh, this week. I want to encourage you with our vision. Our vision is to see the nations taken for God, to see the dominion of God's presence, to be able to replace the darkness. And so this is going to be geared towards intercessors, but I want to tell you, everybody in the body of Christ is an intercessor because Jesus Christ is our great high priest. He is our intercessor. If he's the head of the body and we are members of his body, that means everybody is in the body of Christ is an intercessor. So these programs will be helping not only to develop <clears throat> and, and to strengthen intercessors that are already established and, and have been operating in that ministry for a long time, but it'll also be those that have never understood or, or have never been a part of intercession in any way. And so we're going to be able to give you the tools, the resources to help you begin to grow in that area. I remember that the Lord spoke to us many years ago and uh, like I say, I've been around in the Holy Spirit for well over 50 years, so we've had a lot of opportunity. Uh, the Lord had given me instructions not to look at what the enemy was doing because that's where we always get tripped up. That's where we always get discouraged. That's where we all, all get fear. But the Lord told me to look at where he's moved in the past. For where he has moved in the past, he will revisit that place. We have lots of scripture, and we're going to be doing some teaching uh, and that's going to be made available to you, some Facebook teaching, teaching and hopefully some more of these little short ones. But whenever uh, the Lord moved <clears throat> with the altars and he began to establish his presence, then wherever his altars were, we saw that Abraham, for instance, had, had a covenant made with the Lord in Bethel. And he, that was one of the first places that he came. And God communicated and spoke with him. And then he, in, in chapter 13 of Genesis, we see that he returned again when he was going to be communicating with the Lord. And so we see generations pass, and we get to uh, Genesis, the 28th chapter, and we see the grandson, uh, Jacob, who is leaving his, the, his his father's home. He's going into Padanaram to get a wife, etc. There's a long story that goes in between there. But one of the things that happens as he's traversing, he stops at this place for the night. He doesn't even know where the place, he's never been there before, but he takes one of the stones, he puts it under his head, and he has a dream. And there the heavens were open. He saw a ladder set b between heaven and earth. And when we begin to look at the geographical location, it's the same place where his grandfather had built an altar, where his grandfather had had communication, where his grandfather had been given a commission that the land was going to be his and that God was going to bless him and his family. And so that prophecy was then uh, repeated to Jacob. And Jacob said what many of you will say, God is in this place that I didn't even know it. So there have been moves of God in your country. I want you to begin to inspect. I want you to begin to do research. I want you to begin to find the places where there's been revival, where there's been moves of God. Go to those places. Visit those places. Do a, a repentance and begin to lift up his presence. Begin to worship him and see that the heavens don't begin to open. We know that, there, that God has destined for every nation to have revival. And I think if you go far enough back in history that most of the places, even if you're in some of the most remote places, God has spoken and communicated with his people. He's more willing to communicate with you and to speak with you than you are to hear him. And so I encourage you, this is your assignment for this week. And so I'm interested Please send me testimonies and things that have happened as you have responded to the words we've given you. This has been such a pleasure to talk to you today. And we're looking forward to every week being able to bring you little nuggets. We have a lot of teaching materials and we're happy to share them with you. We just want to see God's people raised up, awakened, that the church will be awakened. You know, we talk about the 10 virgins. All of them were asleep, but half of them did awaken. And so we're looking for a, millions of intercessors to begin to come on board. And so we're at, we want you, we want you, no matter what nation you're in, no matter how humble your, your village is, no matter where you're at, if you want to be a part of this throne room prayer, just sign up and we will be happy to have you join us.
Are you an intercessor? Join the Throne Room Prayer Intercessor Network to be a part of a global prayer initiative. Together we will impact the nations through prayer. By signing up online, you will gain access to several teachings from Lila Tahoon, videos, articles, and an exclusive Facebook intercessor group. For more information, visit god.tv slash trp and become a God TV intercessor today. We're so happy to come back today to our guest, our very special guest, Mark Daniels. He's from, he's pastor of uh, Focal Point Church Orlando. I knew that already, but you know. And uh, he's also uh, head of Reviving Nations. And so we're so delighted to have you here today, Mark. I'm glad to be here. And I've got some questions for you, and okay. I'm sure the people that out there in the audience have questions for you too. But here's one. Uh, how do we push back the darkness that we see in the land today? Amen. So much of the church is discouraged because they see so much darkness mm -hmm. coming in from so many different directions. Yes. A lot of times people can feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. But we know that our king is a, is a true victorious king. He, He's not defeated. He's not coming back for a defeated church. Exactly. He's coming back for a church that is victorious. Mm -hmm. And we really feel like, even you mentioned in the opening about the ten virgins, mm. there's a need to help awaken the church. That's true. Because if you just try to go into prayer immediately, you sometimes don't have the strength. Right. And you sometimes don't know how to begin to really get going. So mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. We went into a nation. We met with about 350 pastors. We probably spent three or four different visits. We're just awakening them and really beginning to call them back to that place of real surrender and trust to God, that place where you just abandon your heart, like when you first came to Him, oh, yes. and you just give yourself to Him. And then we started talking about building prayer, that, mm. the, that we can change the spiritual atmosphere, Amen. because what drives out darkness is light. Of course. It's the presence of God. As Absolutely. we begin to draw the presence of God, He is light. Mm -hmm. He begins to extinguish the darkness. So. Right. We started doing this and we started saying, your heart is an altar to God. Let the fire That's on that right. altar be renewed. Right. So we started calling them how to begin to really renew the altar of their own hearts. Mm -hmm. And then we called them to their families. And most pastors weren't praying in, as families. They're, yes. Because of hurts in the family, because of other time ways, they weren't praying. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we were challenging the pastors, it starts with your family. Nobody in your church Mm -hmm. is going to be praying in their families unless you start that. That's right. And we started calling that, and they started building that in their families. And the testimonies in their families began to fire them up to challenge the church. Yeah. We need to draw the presence of God. Now, now, this is what happened. When they started getting the home, where the presence of God was coming in the home, healing wounds, wow. causing kids to begin to come and want God, wow. beginning to reconcile. You know how he says he brings the fathers home? We were in mm -hmm. Asia where the fathers were really harsh on the kids, mm -hmm. but their hearts, they were coming repentive. Wow. Now Joel says that the hearts will return. And yeah. so we started seeing that. And then they started saying, listen, if God's presence can change my home like this, mm -hmm. I want to take it into my workplace. Ooh. And they started bringing it into the workplace, and the presence of God started moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could just tell you story after story, whether it's a psychiatrist office or a, a manufacturing plant, mm -hmm. or a, they're drawing the presence of God, seeing people come to Christ, seeing the whole factories be changed by mm -hmm. God's presence. Then they begin to rise up and say, God, come into our nation. Wow. Wow. Amen. So that gave them the faith to begin to believe for their yeah. nation. Wow. How would it look uh, to build an altar at a place of like a manufacturer. Amen. Well, the basic components of an altar aren't strange to any mm -hmm. of us. We need the Word of God. The Word of God needs to be the centerpiece of our lives. Yes. And we saturate so much in the world, but not the Word, that we begin to become worldly Christians. Huh. But as we draw people back to the Word, and we really started challenging them to saturate in the Word. Mm. Let the Word of God wash over you. Let the Word of God begin to exalt the Father to you. Yes. And they started doing that. So I'll give you an example. Please. Uh, there was a guy, he worked at a technology manufacturing plant, and he was ahead of a division of 100 people. This is in Asia. And he 
he was uh, maybe six believers in his hundred some people. And he started mm -hmm. saying, let's build an altar to God. So they came and read the word for about 30, 40 minutes on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And then they began to worship God as he was revealed to them in scripture. Wow. They would worship him and worship him. But the presence of God was not coming like it was when he had it in his home. Sure. So he started saying, God, what's hindering your presence? And the Lord started showing them, there's things you do in your business practice uh -oh. that are against me. Yeah. And he said, you stop doing that and mm -hmm. I will begin to come. So he had to go to his boss and said, those things you're asking me to do, I can't do those anymore. Okay. And so he started making changes and then the presence of God started coming. Mm -hmm. More people started coming. Mm -hmm. So they started Monday and Friday having this time to read the word and then just worship God. Wow. And then out of that sense of his presence, God, how can we advance your purposes in this manufacturing mm -hmm. plant? Long story short, God began to lead them and God even challenged them and said, now listen, you're working these people so many overtime hours that they can't even go home and build family altars. Mm -hmm. So I want you to change that. And he started changing that. Their productivity went up, their, wow. all their vital numbers went up. So the boss of the whole plant, which was multitudes of divisions, came and said, listen, whatever you're doing in your department is, is off the charts. We want to bring all the department heads together and you share with them what you're doing. Mm. Now this is a a Buddhist area, part of the world. So he comes <laughs> there and he it. had five slides. He said, the first slide was, the beginning of all wisdom is the fear of God, reverence for oh, God. And the last slide was, Jesus Christ is the answer. And he told them how they built prayer. Now, Lila, what shocked me, mm -hmm. now this is a Buddhist country, maybe six to 7% Christian. Mm -hmm. But this man, because the presence of God has so changed his department, they asked him to build prayer altars through every department in that plant. Wow. They started having uh, ongoing prayer every hour because every department would have prayer going on in this plant. Now we would have meetings with eight, 900 business people where this was one story among hundreds of stories. Wow. And I remember weeping as I watched the business people sharing as the presence of God changed, came and I wasn't just a businessman, I was a priest of God in yeah. my nation. Yeah. I was changing my nation. Wow. And they all started realizing they have a role in their nation exactly. to see God move. Mm -hmm. It's not just the pastors, but all That's of them it. did. That's it. Amen. Well, I think we have really uh, bought a story that you're only serving God or you're only in ministry if you're behind a pulpit. Yeah. And this is not the issue at all. I love this story. Amen. It would work in any kind of business. Wouldn't yes. It? Oh, you saw it in shop owners. They started realizing we're bringing counterfeit goods in. We can't do that. Wow. But how will we make a living? But they mm. trusted God and did it. Yeah. And they started seeing people that worked for them 10, 15 years come to Christ because his presence was in their work. Wow. Wow. It wasn't just them telling them uh, about God. God was meeting them in the workplace. And you saw it all throughout. I mean, you would even see government leaders. And I started saying, God, you're changing the very fabric of wow. this society by people just beginning to saturate in the word, mm -hmm. praise who you are, mm -hmm. and then begin to respond to you right. and let you lead them forward. So what you're saying then is that it brought integrity. Yeah. And that's what's so greatly missing in most people's Amen. lives. So they were actually being Christians. Amen. <laughs> so well, they wasn't... were they were getting saved. I mean, this they yeah. started having so many salvations at wow. this factory that they started even beginning to uh, hand Bibles out and begin to, I mean, it was really like a whole discipleship program. Wow. And business people love that because they realize my job isn't just being usher at my church. I can be a part of changing my nation. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Wow. I could stay with you for a couple of days. <laughs> Amen. Uh, how can prayer, well, I think we, how can prayer change the spiritual atmosphere of cities and nations? I think you've given us a lead well, in I, I would love to even just, because, you know, there's so many things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we look at it and say, we're just one church mm -hmm. or I'm just one person. Mm -hmm. But I've watched in a nation of 20 million where one church said, we want to gain a testimony. Just one church. One church. We want to gain a testimony. We had been teaching and sharing and everybody agrees with it, yeah. but nobody was willing to push back the right. darkness and draw the presence exactly, of God. Exactly, exactly. And this one church said, we're going to do that, whatever it takes. So they taught on it. The leadership said, we've got to gain a testimony and a, and a reality mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. So they went and did that. And then the presence of God began to come in that church where they got testimonies of neighbors that are non-Christians coming into their homes and beginning to ask for help and then wow. beginning to give their lives to Christ. Praise of, you, Jesus. Of people in their family that would never let them talk about Jesus <laughs> coming in their, their homes and say, would you please tell me about this Jesus you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and on and on. So that one church started then displaying their testimonies. Mm 
-hmm. and it spread to another church and another church. And I'm saying to you, it's not impossible to see God move. No. We just need to see people like right. what you're trying to raise up here mm -hmm. that want to go after him right? and begin to say, right. God, bring a breakthrough in my heart, in my family, bring a breakthrough in our ministry mm -hmm. so that we can begin to gain a testimony mm -hmm. because it's like forerunners. You're opening the exactly. door for others exactly. to come. So basically, Pastor Mark, this is really revival. Yes. It's not in one given church. It's not in, in, in just a move of God for temporary, but this is lasting, established revival that just keeps moving out and out and out. And it's not observed in the way that we consider revival. Right. And so I, I'm sure there are probably people who are not even paying any attention to it, but it's got my attention. Well, you know, it was amazing because it's what struck me even for other nations is this was a small island in Taiwan that we were working mm -hmm. with. It's 20 million people. They felt like their calling was to be like a tugboat, to bring a big ah. ship out. So they feel like we're a small island, but we're to bring the Chinese world into the purposes of God. Good for them. Now listen, as we started seeing God move and they started rising, we would have gatherings of prayer. They said sometimes our city, the most you could gather is 500 believers. We'd have 5,000 believers crying out to God. And then mm. in Taipei, 15,000. Mm. The whole Chinese world then started asking the Taiwanese, will you sure. come here and share what you're doing? And mm -hmm. I realized if one small nation, as they begin to pray, rise up into God's purposes, then it starts affecting the other nations around of them. Of course. What if one city? What if? What if one city says, it's not us that changed the city, it's yeah. God. Oh, so man. let us begin to really seek, have hearts that seek after him yes, again. Yes. And that one city begins to say, let's gain a testimony wow. so it can affect another city and another city. Wow. That's the way revival spreads. Of course. Amen. And it can work in any nation. Yes. I love the fact that you guys are having some uh, different successes in other, like smaller nations. Yeah. To give uh, encouragement and to give us the faith to believe. Amen. You know, we look around at sometimes and we think, there's no way. Everything seems so dark. But the Lord actually in the beginning intended for man to have dominion, didn't he? Yes. And so it was sin that brought it in, so it's going to be righteousness that drives it out. Amen. Right? Amen. Let me see, did I have another question? How can our listeners have hope to see their homes and regions impacted by God's presence? I want to maybe just close with this story. Mm -hmm, please. Um, in the book, Prayer Altars, I, I wrote it as a, a strategy to change nations. It's a wonderful book. You have to get that book. But it, it was really also a strategy to change lives and homes. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give this. There, in, in our home, we had a call from relatives saying, hey, one of our teenagers is struggling. So, uh -oh. <laughs> and can he come to your house for mm -hmm. the summer? And, you mm -hmm. know, you guys try to help encourage him and all of this mm -hmm. stuff. We say, okay. He comes in our house. And we're having prayer altar. And he's watching and looking at it, trying to observe what's <laughs> happening. It's like, all right, because we would read the scriptures together as a family. Then we would praise God. Mm -hmm. And we would just begin to praise and honor him. And then we just begin to go into prayer. And then he said, what was that? And we said, that was a prayer altar. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. Then he said, how many times a week do you do that? Hmm. Now, he had not been doing that. So he just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. So then we do it again. And I come home and later he's with my... 17 year old son, they're praying together. Oh, then we do it again and again. And I see him on the phone outside the door and I said, well, who are you talking to? And he said, I called my mom. And I said, when I come back home, can we do a prayer altar? Yes. Because I want to do this. And then we keep going, we're doing this. This guy's getting Child fired up because yeah. the presence of God. Of course. You know what the Taiwanese told us? They said, who knew that the presence of God would be what causes our young people to get fired up? Wow. They thought it'd be entertainment. So sure. this guy gets so excited, this Christopher, was his name. And he started then going and calling. He called his pastor back home and said, when I come back home, can I have 20 minutes to tell the congregation about prayer altars? Mm -hmm. He was a 14-year-old kid. Wow. We're out in the, the supermarket. He's going, so that lady's hurting. Let's go. I saw this young guy <laughs> that was 14 years old get revived. Wow. Just because he was around the word yeah. and praise sure. and just seeking God. We're not trying to teach. We're just going after God. Right. He got revived. He went back home to his church and shared a testimony. There wasn't a dry eye in the church. Of course not. And you're saying that's one family having one kid. Right. And then he starts carrying it someplace Ooh, else. Who's carrying the fire? Yes. Isn't it? Wow, yes. how awesome. Amen. If it can happen in that family, it can happen in your family. And so uh, we just appreciate how uh, Pastor Mark has shared with us today. I feel very encouraged, 
very stimulated. And I'm hoping that it's doing the same for you. We want to bring to you different ways of, of entering into God's presence and helping to establish. We're believing for worldwide revival, but there's many different ways it can come. It's wonderful to have the big citywide endeavors and the big citywide meetings and attend it. But my question and my burden all along is, but what happens to the people after the event's over? Then they kind of settle back in. But Pastor Mark, and, and what, what's the name of your book? So how can they get them? It's Prayer Altars, A Strategy That Changes Nations. Okay, and how would they be able to get it? They can go on our website, website revivingnations.com, and mm -hmm. you can get it there. It's on Amazon. It's on iTunes. You can get a e-book that, that way. So we also have the wake-up call, mm -hmm. which is another one, just helping to awaken us so we have the strength to go after and seek the Lord. Wonderful. So these resources would be available to you, easy to find, and thank you Mark, for being you, with Lila. us. It's been a wonderful time today. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to take a break right now. We'll be back very shortly with intercession and worship. We want you to join with us and bring God's presence into your home. Are you an intercessor? Join the Throne Room Prayer Intercessor Network to be a part of a global prayer initiative. Together we will impact the nations through prayer. By signing up online, you will gain access to several teachings from Lila Tahoon, videos, articles, and an exclusive Facebook intercessor group. For more information, visit god.tv slash trp and become a God TV intercessor today. today. Join us today in intercession. Build a place for his presence in your life. Lord, we open our hearts. We open our hearts, Lord. The cry is, where is a place made for you? And Lord, we say, we are building a place for you. Lord, we ask that our hearts would be open. Lord, make our hearts be enlarged for the nations, Lord, that we might encompass, O oh God, what's in your heart. Lord, we ask you to pour your heart into our hearts even today, O oh God. Oh, we know that you are all about the nations. Your heart is filled with all the people. Lord, you're not a favorite player. Lord, you are not willing that any should perish. And so, Lord, oh, we're preparing a place for you. Oh, we're preparing a home for you, oh God. Oh, we have loved, oh God. Yes, and desired for you to dwell. Begin to establish your kingdom within us, oh God, so that our lives would begin to reflect you. Lord, we want to bear your image to the nations. Everything we touch. We want it to be touched with your presence, oh God. And so, Lord, I just ask that there would be a mindset change. Father, that we would begin to see things differently than we've seen in the past. Lord, that we would begin to see things from your eyes. Lord, give us your eyes. Oh, eyes of the Spirit, ears to hear what your Spirit is saying. Lord, condition our hearts for the planting of the seed of your word, that a mighty harvest, oh God, will be brought forth. I ask that you would reprogram us, Lord. Father, I just ask that you would go into the homes of those that are with us today. Lord, and I ask that there would be physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. Those broken families, oh God, that you would put them back together. Those broken marriages, those children that have gone astray, Lord. Oh, draw them to you. Draw them to you, oh God. Draw them, draw them. Holy Spirit, draw. Lord, we ask, Father, that nations would begin to be changed, homes would begin to be changed, lives would begin to change. I ask that you would begin to teach your people how to pray. Hey, 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 oh God, that one that has
has given up. That one that yes, ha feels they have no hope. Lord, I ask, King of Hope, begin to bring hope. Hope that brings faith, oh God. Hope. Lord, that one that's sitting so lonely, that one that's willing to take their own life because there is no hope. Lord, I begin ask that you would begin to minister to that one that's watching even today. Break the powers of darkness, oh God, in that home. Break the powers of darkness over that one, oh God. And let there be freedom. Let the chains fall off. Let the chains fall off. Chains fall off. Build a place for your presence in that individual, oh God. Ramon Dolomacopi. Be encouraged today. God is with you. He is not angry at you. He's not mad at you. Oh, he wants to draw you into his presence. Yes. Heaven is my home. His home. Earth is his footstool. Where is the place, you ask, that we have built for you? And so, Lord, even as we are in, in throne room prayer, talking about prayer. Lord, it's all about building a place for your presence. Drawing your presence, oh Lord. Drawing your presence, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited to have you on board. Please become a part of Throne Room Prayer Intercessors. Sign up today, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you for watching Throne Room Prayer. We look forward to seeing you again soon. To join the Throne Room Intercessor Network and gain access to exclusive articles, videos, teachings and an exclusive Facebook Intercessor group, visit god.tv forward slash trp.